Hello everybody and welcome back to Caravan of Garbage where yes we are making our way through the DC graveyard. The movies that didn't quite hit either commercially or critically. Or both. Or both. They gave him a shot didn't they? It was an era we didn't quite know. We didn't what know. What was going to work. It was a couple of years in before we realised it's the just do the, just do Marvel movies. Yeah it's just easy. Just do the Marvel formula over and over again. Just do, just do like 20 Marvel movies in a row it's yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody could do it. That's right. Yeah. Here's a question for you, though. Did you ever think that the 2010 comedy Loser starring Jason Biggs, which also wasn't a big hit for the time, mm -hmm. do you think, like, ten years after that came out, that it would get this sequel? Was that ever in the back of your mind? That's very clever, the thing you've done there, James. Yeah, but no, serious question. Did you ever think that it would get this sequel? No, because they're unrelated in every conceivable interesting, way. Think, interesting, interesting, yeah. interesting. Mm. So, Weed Road Returns. <laughs> That's right. Our favourite... Production company. Now, they were responsible for the cinematic crime that is Jonah Hex, right? Yes. Yeah, we did that last week. Okay. Uh, this time, of course, in conjunction with Vertigo Comics. And you know it's in conjunction and based on a comic because of the hypersaturation, the crank effect. Mm -hmm. I don't think crank was the first to do it by a long shot, but I always think crank when I mm. see a movie that's like this intense colour palette wise. Yeah, right, uh-huh. But also apparently that's because the idea is that every location is supposed to have a different hue, a different oh. colour gradient. And did you did you get that sense? You're like, oh, no, no, where am I? Yeah, I mean, there is certainly that. Now where am I? You were saying to yourself watching <laughs> that's this. That's right. Oh, no, they've written the, the word on the ground yeah. where they are. And I'm still in my living room <laughs> watching this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I guess I got that sense. Yeah, we got that. But I mean, that's I think that's, you know, sort of been built into Hollywood now. It's like if you're in a South American country, it's got to be that weird hypersaturated hue, you know, because it's humid. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, how do you feel coming back to this? What are the strengths of this movie? Because we both, I remember... Well, like, there's, 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 like, the A-Team, which also came out this year, but it was slightly better than that A-Team movie. It was. It came out just just prior to just the A-Team, yeah. I think. Yeah, two, two very, uh, very similar kind of disavowed Special Forces team movies coming out. I think this... Uh, Both I, end in a big shipping container situation. They sure do, right? <laughs> the A-Team. Except one, in, one involves, like... A bunch of shooting and like a motorcycle chase and a, and a sure. plane's about to take off. The other one involves a shell game involving shipping containers. That <laughs> <laughs> only works if the villains, like the audience, only get snippets of what's happening. Which Absolutely, obviously wouldn't yeah. be the case. You'd be like, boy, these shipping containers sure are moving slowly, aren't they? <laughs> the thing we want is still definitely in that one. Because it's yeah. moving at one mile an hour. I guess also the difference between uh, this team and that team, though not so much the new A-team team, is that these guys are all killers. Mm, you know? yeah. Where I think, though, in the A-team movie, they were also killers. I think there's a moment where the guy who plays the Mr. T character, yeah. whose name was... But yeah, Barakas. Yeah, there we go. Like, he's like, I can't kill anybody. I can't do combat. And then I remember him picking up a guy and just, like, dropping him on his neck. And that was, like, his triumphant arc. That's his character arc, yeah. yeah he's learned and grown as a person there, as that other man wouldn't, because he's dead now. Yeah, he's dead from his uh, neck. I remember liking this a lot at the time. Yeah. And I still quite like it. I think it's a lot of fun, and I'll tell you why. And you may, the, to, to finally wind back to the question you had, which is what are its strengths, the, killer cast. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, it's, you know, it's people who went on. We've, we've done videos in the past about... The the actors who've performed multiple superhero roles. Yeah. We've got at least three in this cast. We've at got least. Chris Evans, who yep. was obviously Captain America, mm -hmm. and Push. Yes, he and was Push. He was Jason Push. Was Jason Get Push. out of my way, he'd say. That was his catchphrase. I've got superhero stuff to do. <laughs> and, of course, we've got... Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yeah. who's, who's been everybody from Negan in The Walking Dead to that Thomas guy, Wayne. That guy in Jonah Hex last week or oh. whatever. <laughs> Remember? Oh, yeah. He came out of the grave. He's like, boo, he was boo. He was somebody's brother or son or it something. Was, it was John Malkovich's yeah. son or whatever. That's right. You're right, though. The dynamic of this team works incredibly well. And it seems like also they're having fun. Even though at the start it's like, oh, a bunch, bunch of kids just exploded. <laughs> but other than that, they're like, we're having a good time. Yeah. Speaking of uh, comic book alumni, it's like Zoe Saldana, for mm, example. That's you know right. What I mean? There's a lot going on here. I think also they managed to make each of these characters distinct from each other in terms of skills, either that or, like, hats and novelty T-shirts. Mm, one's a sniper. Yep. One's a skinny nerd. <laughs> yeah, he's so a, skinny. An incredibly <laughs> fit and ripped skinny nerd. <laughs> you know, they've all got different yeah. personalities in that way. But then I, I, I look at something like, say, The Fast and Furious, and I don't really have a sense at this point of what any of their abilities are? Initially, I think the Fast and Furious <laughs> characters had individual abilities. One was then, a hacker. Right? One was the jump from a car to another car But guy. then there's a couple of deleted scenes where they each taught each other all their <laughs> skills in a sort of round-robin situation, and now they're all kung fu Hacking hackers. Hacking and yeah. jumping from planes and, mm -hmm, and yeah. whatever. So, yeah, it does feel like that they've got distinct personalities. It kind of felt a bit like uh, 
the Italian job remake in that sense, sure, which, yeah. which we've mm-hmm. also looked at. But I also think... What a low bar to clear also. <laughs> All these characters had slightly distinct personalities. And T-shirts. They weren't just like the writer in, in different hats. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good, well done them. The writer, speaking of, it's yeah. Peter Berg, mm. uh, who directed, among other things, our favourite, The Rundown. That's our favourite. And also another guy... Two guys? Yeah, two different guys. Is that legal? Did they get the guy back from Loser? It's illegal. James, no. Oh. Oh, it's James Vanderbilt. Who's James a, who, Vanderbilt? Who's a right... No, James. He played alongside Jason Biggs in Jane Silent Bob, whatever. Oh, my God. It all <laughs> comes around together. James Vanderbilt, of course, writer and producer and also a member of the Vanderbilt family. What famous you... for being rich. Oh, wow. Well, it's one of those families where you just go, oh, oh the Rothschilds, and yeah. people go, oh, okay. What are they famous? I don't know. They just got a lot of money they at one so point. so much money. And they just sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good, <laughs> and isn't they it? they must be respected for it. You know what I think also elevates this movie uh, to slightly better than average? Go on. If you don't mind me saying so. Chris Evans, I wouldn't say carries a lot of this. But his goatee carries a lot of this. That's true. And his frosted tips. Mm-hmm. But he's really... What an era. <laughs> what an era. <laughs> Like this is right at the tail. This is well, right, right at the tail end of this era, but there's a lot of like frosted tips and watches with big cuffs, leather cuffs on them. Have you got things to say about watches? Do you? I mean, I don't, but you're probably <laughs> going to spring that on me. I suspect. I, I wasn't going okay, to, but right. now I might. Oh no! But you know, Chris Evans got a fun collection of novelty T-shirts and that one scene where he has a crossbow, which yeah. I really enjoy. That's right, bitches. I got a crossbow. And the one scene where he gets his dick out. And the one scene where he gets his dick out. I think a lot of this movie, uh, like the, the... And not a single woman in the crowd is like, this is definitely a crime. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah this co- is still cool this somehow. This is cool. We, like, we're on the tail end of this. Yeah. This is still cool, we reckon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think Jason Biggs didn't return as the character of Paul Tannock, though? What do you think it well, was Well, the character died in a shootout at the end of Loser. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't think that's what happened, was it? Uh, yeah, no, it was actually a knife fight on top of a blimp. Wow. So, yeah. I remember that movie differently. But look, it does have a villain. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if he's in the first movie, but Jason Patrick shows up as just... Just kind of a Bond villain. Yeah. I mean, he's got fancy suits and a scarred hand and he's after a snook. He's after a snook and he's sort of, he's, he's sort of wildly flip-flopping character wise yeah. in the sense that like sometimes he's kind of smart and conniving and sometimes he'll just shoot a woman because, he he's, because his parasol was knocked slightly askew, for example. Yeah. He's a little bit racist, which I don't think would fly now. No change of plan. For good reason. Yeah, yeah. But I think maybe one of the reasons is in the comic book, yeah. That character is two guys. Oh, he's two guys. He's twins in the like in the, back to back. Yes, tied up together. <laughs> wow. No, but in the if you notice in the in the movie, sometimes he wears a white glove, sometimes he wears a black glove. That was a in the comic books that was a clue that they oh, were different guys. And at the end really? you're like, "Oh, there's two Maxes." Really? So maybe maybe that explains why he's so all over the shop, but I think it's also like that works as a kind of you're right, I'm like a manic Bond villain. That's quite Maybe it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, this Definitely leads into a sequel that didn't get made. They could have completed the Loser trilogy, but no, they had to drop it off here. But yeah, that would have been really interesting to explore. But you know what else is good about this? Mm-hmm. I think the action scenes in general also, like a, like a little bit above average. Mm, yeah, it's yeah. got a pretty good van heist. Someone's thought about <laughs> Someone some of this. Thought, you know, I love a good van heist. I love when somebody swoops in and picks up a van with yeah, a helicopter. Because right? yeah, yeah. everyone on the ground is like, what is, what's going on here? They're on the radio. They're like, what, what's going on there? What can we do? It's, it's flying. Just... It's in the sky. Get the, what, what do you get the choppers in the air? We did not have a big magnet. This movie walked so Fast 9 could run. I agree. And, and with scenes where everything was a magnet. Everything was a magnet. But even things like to get all the people out of the van, like the SWAT team, they fill it with gasoline. And then when they come out, they can't shoot because they're covered in gasoline because of sparks and explosions and the like. Um, I also think... The best action scene or sequence in this, and, and you alluded to it before when talking about Chris Evans' dick, mm-hmm. is when he infiltrates that building to Journey's Don't Stop Believe. Yeah. Now, to me, I'm like, if you're going to do this movie, you know, do you get Wheatus back? Because they did Teenage Dirtbag mm, for the yeah, first yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Do they do a cover of this or like a new song? Do they do Leroy is the <laughs> Mojo Man? Say, I know you were. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. I always know, James. I've known you long enough to know when you're going to mention <laughs> Leroy is the Mojo Man. <laughs> But that whole sequence of him getting into the building, changing clothes, mm-hmm. getting upstairs, getting the data, yep. you know, doing the fake shootout. That's in the comic too. That's in the comic, yeah. And then escaping. Terrific. Like yeah. the best thing in this movie, mm-hmm. I, I feel. Uh, and I would say that's even slightly, slightly, slightly above average, above okay. Do you that's, know what I mean? That's terrific, yeah. But, it, but the ending's... 
It's not too bad either. I mean, the idea of driving a D Ducati into a, into a plane, while well, the guy from Mindhunter, who I know has a real name, I apologize, here it is on the screen, like he flies into a jet engine. I love that. Speaking of comic book alumni, Idris Elba is obviously in this movie as That's well. That's right. My goodness, takes a villainous turn. Yeah. I thought Does he, he do that a lot? Because I watch, remember watching this and going like, is this one of the ones where Idris Elba's going to take a villainous mm, turn? Good question. Mm. Let's name all the Idris Elba movies we know. Uh, the Office season three to four ish. Um, at least one Pacific Rim movie. That recent cowboy western, which I quite liked. Uh, the TV series Ultraviolet, where he's a vampire hunter, but not the not the Mila Jovovich movie, but a series like a British series called Ultraviolet. Luther. It's a series, but I consider it one big movie. Mm. Since we're naming movies, mm. I think that's everything, right? Yes, we've got everything is done. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, like, like it's a pr it's a pretty fun ending, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan goes for the bomb trigger or whatever, so uh -huh. that, so the dude from Speed Two can get away. And I like at the end how he's just escaping on public transport, you know? <laughs> and he's like, "Give me a watch, give me a watch." It's time for watch trivia, I guess. Ah, uh, okay, all right, God, all right. Hang on. <laughs> what do you What do you want to know? What is it? <laughs> What, what is what do you mean? The what watch. is, what is like, watch trivia? Where well, you tell us what a watch is? We oh, just did it. Okay, we did it for a different movie. We recently. did. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> you, you were like, oh, I couldn't do it in Jonah Hex. It was only pocket watches. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's your wheelhouse or no, watch house, true. if you will. Mm. You don't have to name the watch if you don't want to. If you refuse to. Well, Jason Patrick wears at least two watches. Wow. Okay. This is on the scene on the beach. He, I, I'm pr look. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the expert you think I am, James. You're Rain Man for watches. I'm pretty sure on the beach. Uh, he wears a uh, a Breitling Super Ocean uh, chronograph, okay, uh, with a blue dial and a, and a black rubber strap, as befits the situation. Yes, yes, yes. And the, the watch that he gets taken off his wrist yeah. is a is a Breitling Navitimer chronograph with a white dial and okay, a steel bracelet. Yeah. Okay, wow. So he's actually picking the watch for the situation. Is yeah, what you're saying. beach time, being mugged. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you do. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's called a sense of occasion, James. Oh, I get you, I get you, I get you. Cool. Anyway, it's time for uh, um, trivia for the movie The, the Losers. Often I'll think of a pun, but people don't <laughs> like it. With Constantine, I was complaining to you about this before we recorded. <laughs> I said cons trivia, and I got many comments that were like, why didn't you say constant trivia, James? Mm. And let me tell you this, I don't think about these. It's not even a joke. It's just a thing that I think about briefly, and then I put it in here, and then it's nothing. And then Ben or Lawrence <laughs> have to put a... Like they spell it out. I have on to the figure screen, out how you, how you I said it, it or yeah. whatever. It's yeah, not yeah. anything, and I'm not taking suggestions. Anyway, you said that I said, James. Well, I actually respect the opinions of the viewers, and I and I think, yeah, they should they should make all the comments they like. And you also uh, you want to give them all some money, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't have any money. Yeah, so. but like if they saw you, say in real life, they could you could they could ask you for money. Yeah, I mean they could ask. <laughs> they could ask. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's. The Losers Trivia, or whatever. Jason Biggs actually shot this movie concurrently with Boys and Girls, also in the year 2000. Wow. Jumping on a plane from a set of Loser in Toronto to LA and then back again. This is another one of James' A hard-working Hollywood mistaking boy. Mistaking the movie we've watched for a different movie, which has somewhat similar names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The music video of the song Teenage Dirtbag by Wheatus mm -hmm. features the character of the film as the song features on the movie soundtrack. Unlike the movie, the music video was set in a high school and Dora dates a bully jock and not a sleeve college professor mm. which I'm sure you remember as played by Greg Kinnear who might actually be the brother of Jason Patrick that would be fun it's like in Die Hard how Hans Gruber's yeah, brother shows right. up sure, later sure, sure, yeah. for revenge mm. is he wearing a glove in that movie I can't remember he seems like a man who maybe depending on the weather might wear gloves it's true mm. but Jason Biggs has that like furry hat situation <laughs> so that, that you know that location certainly has the weather for it doesn't it I agree the dish from Golden Eyes in this they're yeah, on top of it at one point. That to scrape uh, Sean, Bean. Sean Bean out of it. Just his sticky remains. I think that collapsed relatively yeah, it did. recently, it did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's video of that, yeah. Good stuff. Jensen tries to bluff his way past security guards by claiming he is part of a secret government experiment. Uh, Chris Evans will later appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to portray uh, Loki briefly. Do you remember that? When yeah, he yeah, was yeah, Loki yeah, and whatever, was... and he was like, boo, I'm Loki, but I look like Chris that's Evans. That's true. Yeah. And also he says he gets telekinetic powers, just like Jason Push from the movie Push. <laughs> that's right. What was his catchphrase again? Get out of my way. Oh. And then he does a push. Yeah, nice, great. Yeah, you remember. And I've just written here a last bit of trivia. Yes, a lot of people in this movie have been in a lot of comic book movies. Oh, haven't they? And, and if we haven't named them all, just don't worry about it. Just drop it, please. Just drop <laughs> it. You don't need to. You know, I know there's like for some people out there, like a big part of them is just like, I'm going to name every character and every actor and everything they've ever done. Mm -hmm. Just don't. Just don't do it. James, That it's that kind of, it's that kind of quitter talk yep. that means 
there's no internet movie database of any kind. You know what? That's if, a good if point, people, actually. If people believed in themselves, we'd have a database of all the movies everybody's ever been in. This isn't a database, though. No, it's true. This is just whatever. <laughs> this is just, here's some things we think of this thing we watched. Right? You know? Why is anybody interested? It's wild. It's wild to me. I mean, I appreciate it, but it's wild to me, Mason. <laughs> Anyways, budget. D- it's yes. Sorry? I was just going to say, did, did you have the thought, you know, right at the start of the movie where mm. the, the, the helicopter crashes yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and the losers, they want to they wanna make it look like they've also died in the crash. Yeah. So they just bundle up all their dog tags <laughs> and they just throw them into yeah. like a six inch wide mm, square. No, 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 and no, the, no. the air crash investigator is going to look at that and be like, well, I mean, I guess, I guess when the missile hit, they all just huddled up into a little spot and then they were all turned to ash. Yeah, exactly. Case closed. You don't want to, like, loop that over a kid and go, sure. like, his skeleton shrunk in the explosion. Mm. This must be skinny nerd Chris Evans's body because he's right. also small like a child. Looks like he had a rickets. <laughs> Anyways, budget, Mason. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that this was a sequel because Loser had a budget of $20 million and only made 18.9. It's the kind of movie where, like, that wasn't received well enough either critically or commercially. To receive a follow up, do you know what See, I mean? we've reached the point in the video where if I don't just go along with that, the video will end up going longer, I think. So, yeah, it is weird. Actually, yeah, it's exactly. weird. It's weird, yeah. But it's not like this guy. Must have been a passion project. You know, somebody up up the in the decision making process, somebody up in a yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the Warner Brothers boardroom was just like, Yeah, I love these characters. Yeah. I love I love what Jason Biggs's character turned into in The Losers, so we've got to do this. Oh, he again. died in the on the roof of the blimp, of the roof of the blimp. Remember? Yeah, yeah, but weren't they searching for his remains? Oh uh, yeah, uh, and then they found his hat. That's right. I do remember that. Paul Tannock. What? His name was Paul Tannock. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, but this one though, this gamble on a sequel didn't pay off. It cost twenty five million, but it only made twenty nine point nine worldwide. But yeah. look, I think if you haven't seen this, it's worth just. It's fine. If this was a Netflix solid. original film, yeah. I reckon it'd be like this. It would is, be the best this one. Is a, yeah, this is a cut above, <laughs> I think you'd say. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But in the area we're in now, you know, just wouldn't, wouldn't get a look in. Would wouldn't it? get a bloody look in, mate. Yeah. Uh, now, look, there's been a lot of call. People like, when are you going to get to Green Lantern? Well, here's a hint towards next week. It's Green Lantern? Yeah, we're, we're doing Green Lantern finally. I was right. thinking about holding off. Do you know what I mean? Just waiting till like the Green Lantern show appears or whatever. Sure. But we made people watch Twilight. Like I feel like we put people through a lot with Twilight. And we sure, made yeah, yeah, this yeah. is really a one for them situation. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. And if you do want to see these early, including Green Lantern, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where they always go up early mm-hmm. every goddamn week. Uh, if you do want to sign up also, there's bonus podcasts, there's movie commentaries, there's a bunch of exclusive stuff that only goes up there, all of it ad-free, including our podcast, The Weekly Planet, uh, where we talk about right. comics and TV shows that comes out Monday but ad-free the day before on Sunday. Wow. I just love plugging shit. I know people aren't here, but I can't help myself. I'm always hustling. Do you know hustle? Oh, you think c- everybody switched off? By yeah. Now. Do you know hustle culture, Mason? You familiar with this? Yeah, Are you familiar I'm with Sigma grind set? I was going to say I've got the business grind set. Don't yes, worry yes, about yes, it. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I get up before I go to sleep. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. By business like mindset, do you mean you have like a trench coat full of old watches? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Uh, I'm leaving. Are you leaving? Um, yeah, I think I'm leaving. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.